Yes, I love empanadas. I've eaten so many pasties in my time, I've turned into a pasty. That's why my mum used to say, Chris, can't buy a bit of pasties and I need to try one of pasty, can't? <laughs> Yo, I'm Chris Roberts, aka Flame Baster, and look at this fire beast. Wow, the Gosley Dome has found its new spiritual home, Unhen Lad Van Hattai, land of my fathers, the land of red hot fire breathing dragons, Kreuzhoi Gymru, welcome to Wales. So, fire runs in our blood, it's seared into our DNA. Back in the day, my Welsh ancestors emigrated to Patagonia in search for a whole new life. When they got there, they were hit hard by a whole new world of beautiful fire food. So, in their honour, I'm going to cook up a banging recipe in the beautiful dome. Every country on the planet has its own take on the pasty, and every province in Argentina has its own little twist on the glorious empanada. So, this is my version, a little tip of the cap for my Welsh forefathers who f***ed off to Patagonia, South America back in the day. Welsh rabbit, beef empanadas, oh yeah. First off, I want to get some sizzle sizzle action on this beautiful Welsh beef. So let's set the pan up to temp. And while that's getting hot, let's cut up some leek. This is the national vegetable of Wales. I have no idea why. Just give it a chop. It's 500 degrees in here now, so this pan will get up to temp in no time. It's already smoking, so let's hit it with some oil. In with some olive oil and in with the beef. Back in. Once I've separated all the beef, I like it to develop a little crust, get gnarly, caramelised. So, just don't touch it for a bit, just let it sizzle. I'll enjoy the view for a minute or so. <laughs> well, you done that nice. Ah, this is cooking quick. Let's hit it with some spices. Here, I've got some chilli flakes. I love a kick. Cayenne pepper, again, it's a different kick. I love the contrast of the cayenne pepper, chili flakes, cumin, beef and cumin, best mate, and some ground coriander. Just, I love it. So, in it goes. And we'll go in with the leeks too. Our back end to cook it off. The straight to air smells now. If you could smell what I'm smelling now. And it's a really, really simple recipe, really, yeah? But it's beautiful. Oh, yes, it's there, the beef. It's caramelised, crispy, gnarly, some big juicy bits. Love it. So, let that chill. Just some wood on the fire. And I love cooking with wood like this, you know. Look at that. High ping means dry wood. Wood isn't fuel, okay, when you're cooking. It's an ingredient. This is ash and hardwood. Got really subtle smokiness. Ash burns well, burns hot. Subtle smokiness. Beautiful. If you've got a low... Like damp dead, put that wood in the bin. It's rubbish, you don't want damp smoke on your food. So the beef and leek is just chilling, now it's time to make a killer rabbit cheese sauce. I'm gonna make the rabbit sauce in the same pan. Don't wanna waste any of that liquid gold charred mince flavor at the bottom. So, in with a couple of knobs of butter. Butter melts quick in this beast. Don't ta, get some flour about a tablespoon of flour and get the roux going and it's essential that you cook the flour out if you don't cook the flour out you're gonna have a greeny rabbit sauce just keep an eye on it because it does cook crazy quick to this just get it up to like a, a nutty a nutty brown it's coming along nicely now at this point i like to add some mustard powder i don't know like a couple of tablespoons or something and some worcestershire sauce worcestershire, worcestershire sauce and some Worcestershire and some Worcestershire sauce. I like one of my food heroes said in his book, Fergus Henderson, a long, long dash of Worcestershire. Okay, back on the fire for a bit. I don't worry, I know that looks lumpy as hell, but the stout is gonna save it. So, a good glug in, I'm back on the fire. And just keep stirring until it gets silky smooth. Now it's time for the rest of the stout. And like Keith Floyd said, if the booze isn't good enough to drink, it isn't good enough to cook with. Big love, Keith, the king. So back on the fire. Yeah, that looks and smells so good. 
So, to melt the cheese, I've got about 400 grams of Welsh cheddar here. Take the pan off the heat, in with the cheese, and the residual heat will melt the cheese. Now, I am going for a really thick sauce here. It'll just hold up better in the empanada. Back in to melt that cheese. Oh, yes! <laughs> it's like golden Guinness and cheese magma. There are other stouts you can use. And in with the beef and leek and spices. <laughs> it is totally next level. Wow, you have no idea how tempted I am to smash the lots with this spoon now. But that's the empanada filling and it's essential. You let it chill, let it cool down, ban it in the fridge. But got left cumber it and freezing. Hell you, it is a bit chilly here, so this is my fridge. About an hour or so, chill down. Let's hit the empanadas. The mix now is totally chilled, solid, perfect for the empanada filling. Let's roll the dough. This is the dough I made yesterday. Made a little salmuera, gauchos brine, two cups of water, quarter cup of salt, in with about half a cup of lard, about five mugs of flour, just all-purpose flour. Give it a knead, roll it into about inch thick discs, wrap it, chill it in the fridge. we have got a beautiful empanada dough. So, let's roll it out. You want the dough to be about an eighth of an inch thickness, so quite thin. Cool, happy with that one, I'll roll the other half. Don't know what shape that is, but I'm happy with it. I forgot the dough cutter. Um, oh, Gosney, it's got my back. This is the chimney cap. That's actually a perfect empanada sized dough cutter. So, let's make some rings. And there you have it a perfect empanada disc. So, let's get the rare bits be filling. You don't want to fully load these empanadas or they're going to burst, so a good spoonful in each one. Watching my sausage fingers trying to crimp an empanada. So twist and push, twist, push, twist, push. Yeah, it's looking good. I'm happy with that, happy with that. Now, I'm definitely not a professional crimper, but I think they look good, man. They look good. My glorious little Welsh rabbit empanada. They look good now, but they'll be transformed when they're hitting the wood oven. A little cast iron pan. Just get it up to temp. My dad used to go travelling to Patagonia loads back in the day. I remember him telling me one story about the gaucho telling him there that the most essential part of an empanada is that it's cooked in the Horno de Barro. Let's do it in the Horno de Gosni. Got a rolling flame. A cast iron. Just get in there. In they go. And they're ready when you have those beautiful black bubbles on the top, so they won't take much cooking. Just pull them out, give them a little swap when they're cooking, just so it gets an even cook. Oh yeah, look at those black bubbles, just like the Snowdonia Mountains behind me. Now I'll just give them a little swap around so they cook evenly. And that's why you cook empanadas in the wood oven. Just look at that. I am so excited the empanadas have cooled down a bit. The only way to eat these is with lashings of Worcestershire sauce and a drink of stout. And all that effort in the crimping makes a beautiful Worcestershire sauce crevice. I don't care, there's rare bits all over my face. There's no mess on your face you haven't gone in hard enough. And seriously, that char from the 500 degrees Celsius heat from the wood just takes this empanada out of the stratosphere. The rabbit mix is stunning. Beef, cheese, booze, Worcestershire sauce. That's all my major food groups covered right there. What more do you want? Yeah, da. Wow. But the mic could be a mic drop. Empanada drop. A good one. <laughs> Roxy's coming to shots. She's licking all the Welsh rabbits that I've dropped all over the floor and over my feet. To the camera, Rox. Nut. 